Welcome to a brand new episode of the Jam Pack Report today for April the 21st of 2020. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest gaming news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it is your one-stop shop for all of the hottest gaming news that you need to know. And today we have plenty to dive into, especially if you are an Xbox fan, because for the budget-minded gamer in your life, you could be getting an Xbox Series S this holiday season. We will talk more about these new rumors that are beginning to make their rounds, and of course share the adorable little box-shaped mock-up that you might have seen floating around online. On top of that, Death Stranding has been delayed on PC, Nintendo is investigating some security breaches, and we have plenty of other news to dive into today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's top gaming news. First off, Microsoft's cheaper next-gen console, the Xbox Series S, could reportedly be revealed in May. The long-rumored console, previously referred to in leaks by the codename Lockhart, is designed to appeal to cost-conscious players and will target 4 teraflops of computing power as compared to the 12 of the Series X Windows Central reports. Although the system is reportedly less powerful than the Series X, it is claimed the Series S will still offer aspects of the next-gen experience currently unavailable to past-gen consoles, possibly in the form of faster SSD loading speeds and limited ray tracing. It was previously claimed that Lockhart would ship with a faster CPU, no disk drive, and target 1440p gaming. Game developers would be expected to support both the Series X and S, it's claimed, in a setup similar to the existing Xbox One X and One S consoles, as well as the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro. Microsoft has already said the first few years of Xbox Series X releases will be expected to run on its less powerful legacy hardware, as well as PC. Series S may be heavily promoted with Microsoft's xCloud streaming service, which could theoretically allow the console to stream Series X quality performance when Microsoft transitions its server blades to incorporate the next-gen processor. Windows Central claims this week that Xbox employees are now testing Xbox Series S in their homes and that the timing could line up with reports of an upcoming Xbox reveal event. It has been claimed Microsoft is planning reveals for May in addition to a digital showcase around June, which matches what VGC has been told. Microsoft said on Monday that the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077-themed Xbox One X console will be the last special edition version of the hardware, and Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad suggested the company could discontinue the current-gen model ahead of Xbox Series X's launch during the 2020 holiday season. Ahmad also claimed last week that E3's cancellation will see, quote, the first proper next-gen console slash game showcase take place much earlier than June, when the annual trade show was originally scheduled to be held. Windows Central suggested Microsoft may be planning to show off some next-gen games in May too, potentially 343 Industries launch title Halo Infinite and Playground Games Fable Reboot. And so there is plenty to dive into on this news here today. Uh, but first and foremost, is this something that is possible and is it wise? I have two takes on this that I have been kind of throwing around in my mind throughout the day. First and foremost, let's take a look at what's happening around us in the world. There are a lot of people that are financially unstable right now, and they might not be willing to spend between five and $600 on a console or in general, a new console. It is going to be a difficult time if the current status of the world is to continue throughout 2020 to release a brand new video games console because it might not be the first thing on many people's minds. However, if you do offer something of a hybrid between a last generation console and a next generation console where it's not quite the peak, it's not quite the most amazing thing, but it's definitely better than the Xbox Series X, then you could actually find a market that would be willing to pay $300 as compared to the, let's say hypothetically 600 of the Xbox Series X or even the competition of the PlayStation 5. Uh, and so if you take it in that specific way, uh, then the Xbox Series X very well could be released alongside the Xbox Series S. Uh, now, the big question here is, is there room for two competing consoles right off the bat? Because we've never really seen that before. You see consoles released uh, that might have different sizes of hard drives installed in them, but you never really see two different SKUs of a console that play essentially the same games released alongside each other. Even in terms of the Xbox Series S versus the X or the 4 versus the Pro, you still have this gap in between where there was one console from the beginning. Of course, have consumers evolved since that kind of setup has been introduced? Have we gotten used to that idea? Perhaps it could be a gamble, but ultimately, 
I think that May is going to be a big month for the gaming industry, and I think we are going to be seeing a lot about the next generation consoles as well as the games we are going to be playing on them. And it's worth also considering that let's say that this event happens on May 16th. We'll just give it right in the middle of May. You essentially have June, July, August, September, October. You're getting close to when you need to be thinking about releasing this console. November generally is the month in which you see big console releases uh, in terms of PlayStation and Xbox historically, uh, at least whenever we look back at the latest generation. And so if these release dates that they have penciled in on their notepads do maintain their fidelity and they do hold up, uh, then we could be roughly about six months away right now from seeing a big next gen reveal making its debut. And so hopefully May will have a lot more news because right now it's pretty much radio silence in the grand scheme of things. However, moving on, Death Stranding has been delayed on PC until July. If you have been waiting for a delivery from Sam Porter Bridges, you are going to have to wait a little while longer. Death Stranding won't be coming to PC in June, but it's only been delayed by a month. Like a lot of studios, Kojima Productions has recently switched to working from home, which has affected development of the PC port. To give the team more development time, the release date has been pushed back to July the 14th. We are still waiting on the port system requirements and details on other PC-specific features, though we can, not surprisingly, expect higher frame rates and a few other bells and whistles. We do know you will be able to stick a Half-Life head grab on your noggin, so there is that, if that was enough to hold you over until July, which again, the official release date is July the 14th of 2020. This is not shocking. Again, I want to reiterate, over the course of the next few weeks, maybe even a few months, you are going to be hearing more about these massive delays uh, because, quite frankly, working from home is effective, but during the transitionary period or the transitional period, you are going to run into some issues no matter what industry you might be in. And especially when it comes to game development, that is something that is very much so dependent, from what I understand, on the team cohesion. And that is something that is inevitably going to be lost in terms of working from home. That's just the nature of the beast. And as we get more tools that help us navigate that, that will become easier. But as of right now, there are still many issues holding us back in terms of maintaining communication and collaboration. But I digress, Death Stranding is going to be coming out on July the 14th now, if you have been waiting to play the game on PC. Interestingly enough, just as a coincidence, I dove back into Death Stranding over the weekend, uh, and it's a pretty good game, not horrible, it's uh, a very fun game, one that I forgot I enjoyed so much. Very relaxing, very, very relaxing. However, Nintendo is investigating reports of accounts being breached. Nintendo has told Eurogamer it is now actively investigating a wave of reports from Switch owners stating their Nintendo accounts have been accessed. Yesterday, Eurogamer reported that a number of accounts had reported their Nintendo accounts accessed over the past couple of weeks. A Eurogamer staff member was among these recently affected. Some account users reported their accounts had been used to buy digital items such as bundles of Fortnite V-Bucks worth up to £100 via LinkedIn PayPal accounts. Speaking to some of those affected last night, some of whom only re excuse me, realized their account had been accessed after reading our story, I heard a mixed pattern of people using unique passwords and those who had used the same password elsewhere. It begged the question, had Nintendo become the latest target of a simple credential stuffing scheme using details gleaned from other hacked sources? Or had Nintendo's account holders' details somehow been accessed within Nintendo's system itself? Today, Nintendo has responded to those reports and highlighted what you should do if you are affected. Quote, we are aware of reports of unauthorized access to some Nintendo accounts and we are investigating the situation, a Nintendo spokesperson told Eurogamer today in response. In the meantime, we recommend that users enable two-step verification for their Nintendo account as instructed on the official website and if any users become aware of unauthorized activity, we encourage them to take steps outlined, of course, on the official website itself or reach out to support.nintendo.com for general support. If you have not activated additional verification for your account already, it takes less than two minutes to complete, and I would highly recommend doing so. Of course, anytime there is a breach of any sort, I do like to reach out and let you guys know just in case you might be affected. So, of course, this is coming to us from Eurogamer, but the world is interconnected. You should check and make sure that everything is okay and on the up and up. So if you want to do that, I would highly recommend it. And again, uh, this is affecting a lot of people online, so... You know, take it with a grain of salt, but check in. Make sure that grain of salt is not too big, so to speak. 
However, of course, the Nintendo Switch has become increasingly popular over the past few weeks as people have been working from home, but they are reportedly ramping up production on the Switch to meet demand. The Nintendo Switch is harder to find than ever before right now as social distancing efforts helping to fight the spread of COVID-19 have driven up demand for the game system while also impeding production. Nintendo first acknowledged these issues in February when it postponed deliveries for the Animal Crossing themed Switch system in Japan. However, just last week it said those consoles will ship at the end of this month. However, Eurogamer points out to an article in the Nikkei Asian Review paper, I believe I said that correctly, citing suppliers who said they have received orders covering the April-June period that are as much as 50% higher than expected. According to their sources, the company plans to raise Switch production for the year to about 10% more than the 20 million or so consoles it made in 2019. Beyond coronavirus and demand to play Animal Crossing New Horizons or Ring Fit Adventure, the other thing that could keep supply tight is the reseller market. A recent report by Motherboard focused on resellers using bonds to snap up available systems as soon as they go on sale. If that remains a lucrative business and retailers can't get sales out of the public, then it could be a while before you can find one in stores again. Really bad situation here when it comes to the supply and demand chain of the Nintendo Switch. Of course, the main issue here is the coronavirus. It is impacting production, which is beginning to get back on the rails. On top of that, it is impacting the desire to have the console. More people are wanting to buy a Switch than ever before. And so you have this need uh, to produce that the... Uh, actual production facilities can't keep up with currently. Uh, and so whenever you look at the entire situation from a bird's eye perspective, you begin to see that a, an increase in the production is needed for the rest of 2020 minimally. And on top of that, it is also worth pointing out that there's a big market for reselling these consoles. And that's very unfortunate because bots will scoop these up and they will place orders and they will inevitably end up on eBay or Facebook marketplace or whatever other kind of reseller you might come across. And that's just unfortunately the nature of the beast. I don't really know how to combat that. But hey, if you flood the market with consoles and they're still being bought by bots and you still are able to put some on the shelves, then sales just continue to rise. So you might as well produce more, which is exactly uh, what Nintendo is currently in the process of doing. So if you have been waiting for a Nintendo Switch for a while, your time is coming. Just be patient. They are on the way. However, a new rumor is beginning to circulate that Modern Warfare 3 has been remastered and is finished and will launch on PS4 first. Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered felt like the industry's worst kept secret when it shadow dropped on the PlayStation 4 earlier this year, and it sounds like Modern Warfare 3 campaign remaster may not be far behind. Reliable Leaker The Gaming Revolution reports that the re-release is actually already finished and Activision is just waiting for the opportune moment to deploy it. Considering that we heard about Modern Warfare 2 years before it arrived, we reckon this is plausible. According to the aforementioned source, both titles were supposed to launch prior to Infinity Ward's 2019 Modern Warfare reboot, but a shooting in Dallas scuppered the publisher's plans and pushed both titles back. There is no date attached to the purported port of Modern Warfare 3 just yet, but the gaming revolution claims that it will arrive first on PS4, as Activision and Sony signed a timed exclusivity deal for the first-person shooters. Assuming this is all accurate, we can't imagine you'll be waiting too long for the title to arrive. The publisher will want to get these out before it starts the promotional cycle for the next Call of Duty game. Really interesting story out of left field here. Uh, one that, of course, is near and dear to my heart. I played Modern Warfare 3 to death, and the campaign, although very generic, is good. I enjoy it. Uh, but I think this is not out of the question. Now, if you had asked me this exact same question, or you had shown me this statement maybe about two or three months ago, I would have said there's no way they would release Modern Warfare 2's campaign remastered first. Lo and behold, they did very quickly. I truly expected that to be a July release when it comes to when we were going to actually be playing Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered. Uh, but if that trend continues, then I wouldn't be surprised to see Modern Warfare 3 be the summer Call of Duty Campaign Remastered. That makes a lot of sense to me. I think that could be the case, and then that way uh, you get a couple of budget games, if you will, budget Call of Duty games, out between the 2019 Modern Warfare reboot, and then on top of that you have Warzone, and then on top of that you have these two campaigns. It's a massive year for Call of Duty, and if this year's Call of Duty rumors are to be believed, we could it's a Black Ops remaster. That's nuts. Of course, we've talked about that on previous episodes of the show, if you do want to go back and check those out. But man, what a time to be a Call of Duty fan. 
However, what a time to be a Crisis fan as well, because deleted posts suggest that more than one Crisis game will be remastered. Last week, after many days of teasing and a premature leak, Crytek announced Crisis Remastered. The upcoming release will see the first Crisis entry brought back to life on current gen hardware for the first time. Interestingly, Crytek is developing the project in conjunction with World War Z studio Saber Interactive, whose chief creative officer Tim Willits hinted that there may be additional Crisis Remasters in the works. In a couple of since-deleted tweets, Willits shared two intriguing tidbits about Crisis Remastered. For one, Crytek and Saber Interactive plan on talking about the remasters more soon. No, that is not a typo on our part. Willits' original post did indeed make note of remasters, suggesting more than the first Crisis is receiving enhancements. Another tweet from the Saber Interactive executive alludes to his excitement that he gets to help Crytek bring these games to new audiences. WCCF Tech managed to grab screenshots of both Willits' tweets before they were scrubbed from Twitter, and you can check them out in the screenshot which has been shared here. Of course, the most obvious conclusion to jump to is that both 2011's Crisis 2 and 2013's Crisis 3 will eventually receive the remastered treatment as well. This thought assumes that Willits did not misspeak, but two similar posts across two different days indicates he may have simply spoke too soon. Perhaps things will be much clear whenever Crytek is ready to share more information in the future. But as for right now, Crisis Remastered still lacks a firm release date, and it's coming to the PlayStation 4, the Switch, the PC, and the Xbox One. This isn't really shocking to me. However, it is shocking that there was plenty of time to let these tweets linger, and not too many people picked up on the fact that these are clearly uh, in the plural uh, format. You are going to be getting more Crisis games, and I think that's kind of a no-brainer, because if you release them in order, let's say you do Crisis Remastered uh, this year, maybe you do Crisis 2 Remastered next year, and Crisis 3 Remastered the following year, and then in 2024, you put out the Crisis Collection on the Xbox Series X, the PS5, etc., etc., and you get the best of the best, and then you have Crisis 4 somewhere thrown in there. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, and it kind of is, in a way, a reboot of the Crisis series, if you will. Uh, but if you do want to check out Crisis Remastered, it looks very interesting. Of course, we don't have much gameplay right now, but from what we've heard, it's going to be pretty good. And with the reputation like Crisis, hey, you know it's going to be something special. However, Super Mario Maker 2 update lets you create overworld maps. The final major update will launch on April the 22nd, which is today. Is that really today? No, it's tomorrow, my bad. Nintendo will soon start rolling out the final major update for Super Mario Maker 2, and it comes with a feature that gives you the power to make a whole new Mario game. The update will give you access to the World Maker Studio, excuse me, mode, which let you, lets you tie together multiple courses in a Super Mario World-like map. If you are up for it, you can combine as many as eight worlds encompassing up to 40 courses from starting boy to the end castle, and yes, you can share your game with friends. The update also lets you add Koopalings to courses as well as power-ups and course parts from Super Mario Bros. 2. One of the power-ups you will be able to add is a mushroom that gives Mario and other characters their Super Mario Bros. 2 looks, and you can also use the frog suit from Super Mario Bros. 3 for your courses as well as the power balloon in Super Mario World, the Super Acorn from New Super Mario Bros. U, among other additional power-ups. You can watch the video below for more details about the update, which again comes out tomorrow, April the 22nd. And if you want to see that video, you can head over to Nintendo America on Twitter. Neat! I am shocked this wasn't already a thing. That's kind of my entire thought process on this. It's very neat that it's being added, but I figured you could probably create a world. I don't own a Nintendo Switch, and I never played the original Mario Maker on Wii U, so I don't really have any familiarity, but it just seems like a foundational part of the Mario franchise. Uh, however, let's make fun of GameStop, shall we? GameStop is going to reopen some stores. Temporary salary cuts for CEO and others are coming amid the ongoing pandemic. Oh man, what a mistake. All of it, just, just in general except for the price or the, the salary cuts. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic continuing unbated, GameStop is already in the process of reopening some of its stores around the world, along with temporary pay cuts for executives and certain other employees. Cash compensation to the board of directors will also be reduced, and as of right now, about one-third of GameStop stores in the U.S. are closed completely, while the other two-thirds offer curbside pickup for purchases. Quote, the company has begun the process of reopening stores in Italy, Germany, Austria, and the states of South Carolina and Georgia, and is preparing for the potential to reopen in other operating countries and states in the coming weeks, GameStop said in a release on its site. 
GameStop did not make clear if these reopenings would be limited in some fashion or have increased specific safety measures to the pandemic. CEO George Sherman will be taking a 50% pay cut during this time, with a 30% cut for CFO Jim Bell and the rest of the executive leadership team. The board of directors, including the newly added Reggie Fisame, will also have its cash compensation temporarily cut by 50%. Other employees across the business will see reductions anywhere from 10 to 30%, and corporate support staff are also being offered the option of a temporary furlough or reduced hours and pay. GameStop stores closed in the face of the coronavirus pandemic on March 22nd, although it was not without embattled opposition and claims that it was an essential business. It is unknown just how long these temporary measures and pay cuts will be in effect or what the process of reopening certain GameStop stores will look like. GameStop's current goal is to preserve financial health while waiting for operations as usual to resume. In late March, the company expressed its intentions to close more than 300 stores permanently, and it also said it has seen a surge in demand during this time, specifically in fiscal March, ending in, of course, March 21st, although overall sales declined year over year for the nine-week period leading up to April 4th of 2020. And so uh, this is a very complicated issue. Uh, it is for some reason becoming political and I don't want to become political on this show. Uh, but one of the biggest things that blows my mind is that you see scientific research that shows we probably shouldn't start doing things this soon. It's probably not a good idea. Then you see a whole bunch of companies just opening their doors and saying, hey, business is back on, baby, let's go. Oh man, it's it's just a mess. But hey, uh, I I have no other comment on this except for the fact that GameStop stores are reopening, and it seems like, according to their statement, they are aligning their reopening process with the states and the areas that are allowing businesses to resume operations. You see this happening in Georgia, in South Carolina, and those are the two that really point my mind in that direction. But. I digress. That wraps up today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed this one, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about the show and everything we talked about today. Will you be getting an Xbox Series S or an X or a PlayStation 5? Or perhaps you are happy with what you've got right now. I would love to hear, see, read your thoughts down below. There we go. Uh, but until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon and peace.